Welcome to Book Chappie TV. I'm John Purcell. I'm delighted to be here with Professor Brian Cox to talk about the book of his BBC series, The Human Universe. Welcome, Brian. Now, I saw you on stage last night. You explained some of the biggest ideas that humanity has ever uh, tackled. And uh, for those moments, I completely understood. I had a grasp. I saw some great images. You had some great uh, explanations of it. But as I walked out, I started to, to lose some of those explanations. They fell out of my brain. What I like about this book, The Human Universe, is that I can turn to it anytime and have my own private Professor Brian Cox. And remember for another three minutes before exactly. you close it. Yeah. 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 Well, if I, if I look at it every day, and as you do with your um, teaching physics every day, it should slowly sink in the so. state. I think so. I mean, it does, it does go much deeper than a TV series, because big, big TV series are, you know, television's a visual medium, so there's a lot of, of building a, a feeling, building an atmosphere, building uh, emotion, actually, because it's partly... TV series is quite polemical, actually, which is... Some, I think it's quite old-fashioned in that sense. And, and the, the documentaries I always liked as, uh, when I was growing up, particularly, were, were um, Cosmos, Carl Sagan's Cosmos, and Bronowski's The Ascent of Man. Both of those are basically trying to they're, trying to, they're talking about science and astronomy and the great discoveries at the time, but they're also talking about, I think, a way of looking at the world, a way of looking at nature, and in the case of Cosmos, uh, trying to advance, and this in the band, trying to in, advance a way, of, a way of the human race behaving. So, so they're, they're, they're almost political documentaries as well, and Human Universe is that. It gets more political, actually. Uh, by the time you get to the last chapter, it's just one long rant, actually. <laughs> it's just like, right, well, why can't we just do this? Why can't we just get it together? It's that bit in Mars Attacks, isn't it, when Jack Nicholson says, can't we just get along? <laughs> Basically um, that. <laughs> the one thing that joins those, uh, joins the three of you up is passion. Like, the, the, when you see Bernowski just really getting, getting into it and really trying to explain a point, or Carl Sagan just letting loose on, 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 a, on a fallacy and just and setting everyone straight. Yeah. We get that from you. you there are times where the, at the, end of the um, end of a show, you might just do a summing up. And that summing up, as you said, can be extraordinarily political, can be extraordinarily forceful um, because of the obvious passion that you have for the, the subject. Uh, at lunch the other day, you told me that um, you were given a, a greater freedom on the last part of the book when you talk about your, your rant because mm -hmm. You um, you held it back, or you you were you were busy, and you couldn't get the get the thing written. It's actually true all the way through the book. Actually, I I mean I do have the, the great thing about books is that that, that it's only me essentially. So so, so it's the, the television is a is a necessary uh, compromise. It's collaborative because one person can't make a documentary like that. You, you you've got to have a director. Obviously, you've got your, your camera man and, and th there, are, there are necessary layers because you're building something that one person can't do on their own. Whereas book is a um, significantly freer process you just write. But it is true that this one, because the, uh, the, the series filming itself overran to quite a large extent and that, that was because we were fiddling around and filming different things and trying to, you know, think that they evolved those series over time and you always end up going back to the first one that you filmed because it was over 18 months, I think, between filming the first one and finishing it. So you go back and you go, oh, we've learned some things, we'll do it a little bit better. So that meant that the book got quite sort of compressed. And I really enjoyed it, because it meant that it was a very free process, because it just I just wrote it. I just sat there and went, right, yeah, like that, you know. So, so it's kind of unfiltered. And it's the first book I've written that's completely unfiltered, really. And, and so I quite like it for that. So it's not... <laughs> it's interesting, I was just looking at it now because you forget, you know, even then, it's been a while since I wrote it. You look through and you think, did I really say that? <laughs> did nobody actually sort of say, well, no, but it's got this thing that says BBC on it. Did nobody think, are you really allowed to say that in a BBC book? But I did, so so I'm quite, I'm, I really like it, actually. It's my favourite book that I've written because of that, because of the unfiltered nature of it. Um, Towards the end, and the end, I, I submitted the last bit to my poor old publisher one day before it went to press. So I don't think they even read it. So I don't think that nobody nobody read the last chapter apart from me. Which Brian, Brian Cox, uncut. That's that. That's that it is pretty much. Um, with the um, wonders of the solar system, wonders of the universe, you were, were going out there and you're, you're 
mainly looking at the way the, the nature is out, out, out in the universe and in the solar system. In this one, you, you tie it back because it can be, for some people, it can just be a bit empty. Mm. You know, there's, a, there's a lot of emptiness out there and, um, and people drift towards the sense that there's, there's no meaning. Um, but this series and this book bring it together. Can you tell me how you, you, you bring those things together, hu human value and, and yeah. the vastness of space? Yeah, the, I mean, those are the two sort of threads that, that run through the series, and they're pulling in opposite directions at first sight. So you've got cosmology, which has told us, well, even in basic, the basic mapping of our observable universe has told us that there are 350 billion galaxies in the observable universe. Uh, it's told us that the universe certainly extends way beyond the visible horizon. We were sure of that. Um, so we are one planet around one star amongst 200 billion in the Milky Way galaxy. And the Milky Way galaxy is one amongst 350 billion in the observable universe, and it goes on further than that. Um, but also, and we deal with this quite in detail in the book and also in the series, it, the suggestion is now that there may be more than one of those observable universes. So the main fact, potentially, be an infinite number of universes that are being made all the time in, a, in an exponentially expanding multiverse. And these theories are called eternal inflation theories. And mad as that sounds, the, the inflation bit, which is a theory of what happened before the hot Big Bang, before our universe became hot and dense, um, is mainstream physics. And it's relative, it's quite mature now. The theories emerged in the 80s. Uh, and they've been confirmed over and over again that the inflation bit is yeah. by, by experimental evidence. So that's in, in here. So there's that, on one sense, obviously, we're insignificant. You know, just physically. We're, we're just, you know, just nothing. I feel like myself even getting a, smaller. As yeah, the you know, universe itself may be a speck yeah. in an infinite fractal multiverse. It's just really, what do you to make of that? Who knows? But on the flip side, um, one of the central themes of the book is, is the, how we emerged. So how did we come to be here on Earth? How did we emerge into an intelligent civilization, a spacefaring civilization? And how many of those civilizations might there be out there? Well, it's Im virtually impossible to answer that for the whole universe, but you can answer it scientifically for the Milky Way. And we're beginning to make observations again. Then. So we're observed, we, we're observing how many solar systems there are out there in the Milky Way. We have a very good estimate now. We think at least one in ten stars in the Milky Way has an Earth-like planet around it, which means some rocky planet in the right, the right distance away from the star to permit water to be on the surface if the atmosphere is right, and therefore perhaps to permit life. So we've got numbers for that. It's actually remarkable. One in ten is about 20 billion yeah. of those places. But it seems that you can make an argument, especially from a biological perspective, that the odds of an intelligent civilization appearing on one of those planets might be less than one in 20 billion. So we might be the only civilization in the galaxy at the moment. So that means that our civilization, you look out your window now, at the civilization stretching out beyond you, that might be unique in the Milky Way. That makes us valuable. So we've got these kind of twin threads running through. And that, that was something that emerged during filming and then suffuses the book, really. It, there's a, question, a brutal question. If we're the only civilization in the Milky Way, what should, how should that make us feel and how should that make us behave? And my contention is we might feel and behave a little differently than we do at the moment. A very famous quote, actually, by Arthur C. Clarke, a science fiction writer, who said that there are only two possibilities. Either we are alone or we are not alone. And either one terrifies me, which is true. Yeah, it's true yes. But by not alone, I mean ET. I mean things in flying saucers. That's what we're talking about. Civilization. Yeah. They either exist or they don't. Um, either way, we'd behave differently. I think if we knew. So the only way we could behave, we behave as we do. This is kind of the fifth episode and the fifth chapter. We behave as we do because nobody thinks about these things. Really, yeah. we're not considering it. We're just looking downwards. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much for talking with us. Thanks, pleasure. Um, we look forward to um, having the, the human universe on our TV uh, here. Um, all of Brian Cox's books and uh, the DVDs are available on booktopia.com.au right now.